Hello and thanks for joining the session. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the, probably the last session of rewriting that podcast. Uh, I actually have the new application deployed finally. So this is actually the new version that we've been working on uh, for the last 30 or so episodes. Uh, so it's pretty exciting. Uh, the things that we're going to look at, uh, I'm going to review some of the work that I did with the card builder and the card configuration. Uh, this was the thing that I was working on to um, embed a custom MP, uh, custom JPEG into the MP3 uh, before it was actually published. So I'm going to take a look at what I ended up doing there. Um, I found a uh, bug on some of the Twitter card content. Um, it actually is not showing the duration correctly. I'm going to take a quick look at the episode page for an individual episode. It looks like there's some um, information that is left on here from before. I think I'm just going to remove it for now because I, I'm not really super sure that was ever very useful. Uh, so I just want to get rid of it for now. Um, I also want to add a command to uh, rebuild uh, specific types of cards for an episode. Um, uh, when we look at the back end in just a minute, you'll see that there's actually several versions of the card uh, that I have. And I want to be able to say, um, e uh, for a specific episode, rebuild the content. Um, I also want to be able to say, for all of the episodes, I want you to rebuild the Twitter card. Uh, right now, neither of those uh, things are working. Um, I think the only thing that would be working right now is I have a um, on a case by case or on an episode by episode basis, I can process the pristine media um, and rebuild the iTunes card. But that's that's sort of a side effect of all of that. Um, and then lastly, I want to add the fave icon again because apparently I left that out. Um, oh, and uh, robots.txt. Uh, just because these are actually currently missing. Um, and then I think that I'm going to consider this project completed for now. There's a bunch of other things I'd like to do, um, but I think I'll do those as smaller live session projects. The, the current session right now is running at session 30. Um, I think that this is uh, a good point where we're actually able to launch the existing site, or launch the new site. Um, so I'd say but we've pretty much rewritten the website at that point, and it's actually live. So. Um, the next project, I'm not sure what that's going to be just yet, but uh, we'll be done with this for now. Um, bonus points, if I get done uh, with all of this beforehand, I'd like to um, look at how we're handling transcripts. Um, right now we just paste in the uh, rendered HTML. I'll show you the script that I use to do that currently, um, and then see if we can find a way to um, put that into the website somehow. Um, also, uh, I might look at a different player. Uh, I was talking talking to um, Nick Steenhouse. Um, he's been doing some accessibility things, and specifically, he has the podcast accessibility. Yeah. Let's see here what we got. So there's a website that he has been putting together specifically uh, about how to try to make podcasts more accessible. Uh, so I asked him uh, for a little bit of feedback. Actually, he offered up um, whether or not I'd like some feedback, and I said, sure. Um, but one of the things that I did want to find out about uh, was to see if we could get a player that was maybe more accessible. Um, so he had the recommendation of uh, something called Able Player. And let's see if I can open this. Um, it's probably going to result in a site that looks different than what we have now. Uh, but the other thing I'd like to be able to do is have the um, parts of the transcript uh, where we have the, um, the time. I want to be able to click on this um, and have it skip to that part of the episode. So I'm not sure. Uh, that, that really sounds like it's not going to be something we can get done today. Uh, but if it is, that would be awesome. Uh, because, you know, the next step up from having just the transcript here is being able to say, oh, well, I'm interested in this particular thing. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to click on it. Uh, so we'll see if we can get that going. Um, also on the list, yep, so move to part of transcript, and then manifest.json, which this project doesn't have one yet, um, and I don't really know a lot about them, but looking at um, doing an audit on our pages using the Chrome tools, um, it actually recommended that we do that. So if I look at, are we going to do mobile? Um, and I, I've never actually used this tool before, so um, I thought this was actually kind of a cool thing that it was actually actually doing for me. And let's see how long, I don't know how long this is going to take. 
there we go. So um, we can see that the accessibility needs some work. Uh, some of these were things that um, Nicholas actually mentioned to me. Uh, so we'll take care of um, as many of those as we can. Um, and then the progressive web app. Uh, this is where the manifest comes into play. So I don't know. We'll see if we can get into that or not. Um, if you're on chat, feel free to, to ping me. Um, I'll see if I can answer questions as we go or uh, talk that way. All right, so I think the first thing I'm going to do is this fav icon in robots.txt because that's just going to be pretty easy for us to do. Um, uh, Jonathan Jeffries has a question. Why embed text into the image? If it's for a web page using HTML and CSS to make the text appear over the image, has it got to be easier? Um, yeah, so that's actually um, not a invalid question. Um, the reason is for doing things with, um, let's see here, like embedding contents. Let's see, I wish I had an example. Where's it at? Um, I'll just send it to myself. Let's see if it actually works. So I'm going to go to um, an older episode. I'm going to use the Last Jedi one just because I like that one. Let's see if this actually unfurls correctly. Yeah, so this is what I'm looking for. Um, so that um, some of the other metadata will pop out more um, on things like unfurling links in Slack. Um, the same sort of thing should happen on um, Twitter um, and then also on Facebook. So just being able to have something that pops a little bit more before we were just sharing the background image. And that can be kind of cool, but this gives you a little more um, information that, um, to go with it. So it may turn out to be something that um, isn't actually going to be super useful, but it was definitely fun to work on. The other part was the actual MP3s that get embedded into... Um, that one couldn't be found. Let's see here. I'm going to have to open up it's one of these uploads. Let's go to code. Uh, let's see here. Uploads dot that podcast. So we actually upload a bunch of these things now. So signal leaf. Let's not do one of those. Let's do this one. Background image. Uh, so this is the Western one. And so I can do pristine media is the MP3 that was uploaded originally. And the media is the version that has everything changed. So here we can see that not only is it renaming it to be uh, based on the metadata itself, it actually says that podcast episode 50 with the title, uh, which is kind of nice. Um, it's also doing other things in here as well. So if I open this with iTunes and show the info, um, so we can see that it actually has um, as if one that it's a iTunes card that's made specifically to fit square. Um, so this is the, the reason that um, I wanted to do this originally. As soon as I started doing it for this, I realized that I could do it for other things as well. So, uh, so I was really excited about this. This is something that uh, I wasn't sure we'd ever get to, which was just making sure that the MP3 metadata was managed by something other than just me manually or Dave or whoever was doing it. Uh, so now if we go in and change a title on something or change an episode number, um, it just happens in the background, which is pretty sweet. Um, so the way that I ended up doing that, uh, originally we were in a file called k.php, I think. Um, I have since moved on to do other things in this file. Um, let's see, we were looking at, it wasn't ingest, it was process, pristine media handler. All right. Uh, so what we were doing here uh, was any time we got to, the, got to the point where we had new pristine media that needed to be processed, or any time we send the command to process it, uh, we ran into this handler. So we get the episode. We don't do anything if the episode isn't found. So if a wrong command gets sent, we don't do anything. Uh, we have to get the file 
from the pristine media. So we get the pristine media first. That's the version of the file that we actually uploaded. Um, we create the target file name. So this is where we do uh, that, ap- that podcast episode, episode number, followed by the title, and add an MP3 extension. Um, and then we do some things to um, start writing the tags. So we give it the file name for the file that we get from Fly System. So this is actually going to be a local temp file that is represented here. So in the case of my local development environment, this is just going to be a local path anyway, but this makes sure that whether it's local um, or if I'm using the S3 driver, which, which is what I'm doing in production, um, then it's actually going to uh, be an actual file I can play with locally. Um, so we set file name, uh, we tell it we want to do ID3 v2, uh, 2.4, uh, remove other tags, overwrite tags, and then we start setting some information. So this was the stuff that we would have to type in by hand before and potentially have you know, typos or whatever. If we change the title later, if we forgot to go in and change the title here, it'd be kind of a pain. Uh, so we have the title, artist, album, genre, subtitle. Um, we have this bit here now is where all of the magic happens. So this is creating an iTunes card Uh, So it's a card configuration. I'm telling it to use the default fonts. I'm giving it the path to the project directory. So the default fonts are going to come from um, our project directory somewhere. Same thing with default logo. Um, And then I pass it in an episode and a fly system asset manager instance. So with episode, this doesn't actually stay. It's not persistent um, in this object. It just, it's used within this function to do some things. Um, so then we get the iTunes card file name. So this is just a, a local file that we need to have that we're going to write the, this card configuration out to. Uh, we have a card builder that builds a card based on this card configuration. And then we save it to the temporary file here. Um, and we're doing JPEG quality 90 and building some more tag data. Uh, so here we're getting it. Or it, this is some of the stuff that we talked about in the last session, it's just that we're a little cleaner about it now. So we're getting the content. So it just embeds the file get contents value directly into the tag data, uh, which is kind of interesting. It means that you can't really look at tag data very easily using something like printr or vardump because it gets really weird. Um, let's see what else. Uh, so here we create the fly system asset manager file. Uh, so the actual iTunes card file, um, and we give it the um, image that we just created. So, um, or the information for that image. So we have episode, iTunes.jpg, um, and then we write out the data. So this actually um, writes the tags. And if this fails, I just don't do anything with it. It's sort of okay if it fails. Um, I found out that some of our older episodes uh, were encoded using an mp3 extension that the id3 tag library couldn't actually read. Um, So we were seeing some failures there. So it's just, I I like to see the errors, but it doesn't necessarily mean we can do anything about it. Um, And then we write the file to the location that uh, we're going to store on our object. So this iTunes card file, again, this is going to be a, a, it's a placeholder representative of where that file needs to live. Um, And then we save that on the episode itself so we can look at it later. Uh, We delete, make sure and delete the file we just created that we just needed temporarily. Um, And then we create the media file. And so this is actually going to be the file that has been written out to with Tag Writer. So um, we started out with pristine media. Now we're setting the media. So pristine is the media that's uploaded. Media is the version that actually contains um, the changes that we have. Um, I also have it set up to set the duration based on the um, information from the file after it's been written out. Uh, This was something that was just a nice little thing to have at the end. We could probably pretty easily type that in by hand, but this means we don't have to, so I'm just going to be okay with that. Um, I also do a flush, um, and then I did a clear. It turned out that without doing the clear, I ran out of memory really quick. Uh, when this was in a process. So um, this makes sure that um, the episode that we get out up here um, doesn't stay in memory forever. So if if I have like say 15 uh, process pristine media commands come in and each is a different episode, 
for each time it's invoked, it's only going to have this one episode in memory. It's the only one it's getting, but it's actually going to keep it in memory um, as a part of, uh, I don't know if it's part of the unit of work or the identity map. I'm not sure which one of those it gets stuck in. Um, but it'll stay there unless you clear the object manager. So I need to remember to do this more often. Um, anytime I'm in a uh, message handler of some sort, if I use the object manager, um, I need to make sure and clear the object manager as well. And then finally, I delete the um, file that we've written to disk so that um, the temporary local file that we were working with isn't going to stay on um, disk taking up space. Um, the way that this is triggered, uh, we have a, let's see here, we have a listener set up. So I did an event listener on episode pristine media updated. And what this does is it only looks, uh, well, it actually gets the information out of the change set to see what we actually changed. Um, we look for anytime pristine media URL is updated or uh, pristine media URL updated, which is just the value. Um, if either of these two values are in the change set, then chances are we need to rebuild it. Same thing for background image, background image updated title, subtitle, number, and publish, because those are all information um, that we need in order to build the image. So if any of those change, those values change, then we need to um, try and do an update. Um, I'm doing some weird things here to make sure that the value is actually different. Um, so for any of these date time values, um, I think sometimes these values will actually appear as different, um, even if they aren't actually different which sounds really weird, but um, the, the way that Doctrine normally works with things is that it deals with actual objects. So to update the date of an object, you actually assign a new date value. Um, so they are they if they are doing a object compare, um, they are gonna be different objects. So this makes sure that um, we don't actually have, um, uh, that we don't actually try to do an update if we're just uh, getting a, uh, a date time object updated just because it's the same value passed um, that we had before. Uh, same thing with published. So um, we look to see if the change, if there are any changes uh, we care about. If we don't have any changes, then we don't do anything. Otherwise, we dispatch pristine media, uh, process pristine media, uh, create Facebook card, create Twitter card, and create HD card. So these are the three different. Um, additional uh, types of cards that we have for the objects. So the pristine media is its own thing, um, but anytime any of these values change, uh, we also want to update the rest of the cards as well. It's kind of mixing concepts here, but I think that it's probably okay, um, just to keep things kind of simple. Uh, the card builder um, is doing all of the work that we were doing before to actually calculate sizes and things like that. Um, I ended up having to redo the scaling because my scaling logic wasn't even kind of right. Um, but now it appears to be pretty stable. So I completely changed how this was being handled. Um, that was mostly needed in order for the background image to be cropped. So it needed to cover, like if you're thinking CSS terms, it needed to cover and then crop. Um, so that's actually happening now correctly. Um, I can get rid of this. Uh, this was the original code. and. When I looked at it again later, I have no idea why it even worked. <laughs> so uh, that was that was fun. Um, and then I'm doing some stuff to build gradient images. Um, this was something that gave us an issue on one of our previous sessions because the gradient code was broken um, in the version of Imagine we were looking at, and now it's not. So all of this stuff is now built into um, this thing called a card builder. So it's doing everything related to processing the image, uh, where the fun stuff comes from is the card configuration. Uh, the card configuration is where all of the values get set. Um, so these are all the things that could impact um, what we actually want on the card. So things like the overall width, the overall height, uh, the margin that we want to keep, um, pattern file name. I don't think we're actually using the pattern anymore. Um, then we get into date, date font file name, date font size, uh, same thing for the episode number, uh, so we have a lot of information in here. We also have uh, logo width and logo height, which I probably only need one of those. Uh, so we have a bunch of getters and setters. Um, and then 
we get to with episode, which is one of the more interesting methods. Um, this actually takes in um, an episode and an instance of Fly System Asset Manager. Um, we need the Fly System Asset Manager to be able to get a temporary local file for the background image. I think that's something that we want to keep. So we're keeping the background image that's already there. Um, we have get published, uh, we get get number from the episode, um, and we get the subtitle and the title. So these are the things that come from an episode. So rather than having uh, different places do those same things, I just have them all um, in one method on side on the card itself to get this. And then we have some um, specialty methods that create the specific cards. Uh, so create Twitter card um, is doing with margin, so it's using a specific margin, it's using a date font size and logo dimensions. And we have create Facebook card. You can see it has different dimensions, it has uh, potentially different font sizes in different places. Um, and then we have an iTunes card, which is what we started out with, which was 1024 by 1024 uh, with uh, these settings. And then uh, the 1080p card um, is the, probably the biggest one that we have. Uh, where was the with the default. So with default fonts and with default logo, uh, this takes a project directory and then it uses uh, the project directory to figure out where the font should be. So, uh, so we don't have to do this every place that we actually use the cards. Uh, we only have to do this um, with this one method. So we tell it where to find the specific fonts for um, the different uses that we have. And same thing with default logo. Uh, we find out exactly where the logo lives uh, based on the project directory. So that we don't have to do that um, every time. Where we see these used um, is in the message handlers. So we've already looked at Prosten process, pristine media handler. Uh, the way that looks for say like the Twitter card, um, we get the episode, uh, we do with default fonts, default logo with episode. Um, and then we get the card file name, build the card, um, and save it out to uh, JPEG quality. And then we create a new uh, Fly System Asset Managed file with the new information. And then we uh, write or update it and then set it on the card and save. So this is doing um, the same thing in all of these. Uh, but the things that are really different re are just here, uh, where we say which card configuration we want to start with. Um, everything else is almost identical. In fact, I think this is probably different. Um, and yeah, I think that might be it actually. Oh, which one of these gets set? So set HD card. So there's probably some room here to remove some copy and paste, but actually if I have been happy just to leave it like this. So um, that could be something that we could do later if this becomes a pain to really manage these. Uh, but right now, most of the heavy lifting is being done inside card configuration. And this is just boilerplate that sort of has to happen. So anyway, so that's how these things work. Um, if I want to, um, let's see if I can, actually I'm gonna show the back, back end now. So we'll do podcast.test admin. I don't know what that's about. Uh, ah, okay. Um, there. Invalid credentials. Episodes. So let's look at this particular episode. So this is an episode that's upcoming. Here we can see all of the different versions of the card that it's actually generating. Now the thing about the Twitter card is that I had the dimensions wrong. So if we look at the diff here, oh, it's the wrong project. Um, here, so I actually fixed the Twitter card size. So I'm gonna see if I can do a git show. Yeah, so the dimensions were slightly off. Uh, so they, they cropped weird. So all of the images are already generated, both 
you know, that includes these local images here. So I could probably reprocess this. Um, I could actually go in and just make a change. And what this should do, I'm going to open up a rabbit. Uh, what this should do is give us a bunch of commands. Rabbit podcast. Oh, there's 158 commands on here. <laughs> uh, I'm going to flush those. Purge them. All right, cool. Why did that? Delete. No. Okay, now it's queued, or now it's purged. All right, so what I'm gonna do is make a change to this um, file, and what it should do is generate a few commands. Um, let's see what we end up with here. It's working right. There we go, so we have four commands. So this should be the four commands we just looked at. Process pristine media, um, create Twitter card, Facebook card, and um, the HD card. So I'm going to start processing messages. Messenger, messages. And I forgot to put the verbosity on, but we should see this drop to zero. All right, so we got it down to three, two, and if we look before, Twitter card was what? Um, let's see, 640 by 477. And if we reload now, 640 by 477, Twitter card is now uh, 640 by 320. So it definitely made the change. Uh, now we can see if it actually looks right still. Looks like it could actually be um, a little tight here. So let's go in now. We can go to create Twitter card configuration. And so let's see here. Where's the Twitter card? All right, so we had font size of 18. Um, the Facebook image is a lot larger. Uh, so that makes sense with number font size. It's could maybe be 72 instead. With title font size. Um, let's do 128 here. And this is where it would be nice to be able to say now, just go rebuild the Twitter stream, or re rebuild the Twitter card uh, for everything. Uh, instead, I'm gonna have to go in here for now and do this. All right, um, I'm going to actually make sure we can see things, create Facebook card. All right, so did the Twitter card. So let's look now and see if the Twitter card looks a little better. Yeah, I think that's a little bit better. So it um, looks a little closer to the proportions that we had for the Facebook card, which I think is good. Um, I think I like the episode being larger, though. This is where I just personal preference um, comes in. So rather than... Um, doing this by hand. I'm going to create a new command to do this. Uh, let's go ahead and stop this. Then console make command. Let's do um, cards. Um, rebuild all. All right. Okay, let's do some configuration here. So we'll do rebuild all cards optionally. 
specify specific types. All right, so let's sketch out what we want this to actually look like for an API. So we'll do console cards rebuild all, and then should we make it? Maybe we don't make it optional. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do type. We'll make that argument optional. All right. So the thing we can do here, say uh, iTunes or Twitter. Uh, so the things that we'll need in order to do that are type. Uh, we're going to need uh, the episode repository. So let's see. Actually, let's do another with uh, add option. Let's do episode. And we'll do option argument. Shouldn't have removed the boilerplate. Let's see here. Input option. Okay. And we'll do value optional. Okay. And episode. Okay, so we're going to need the uh, episode repository. And we're going to need the command bus. Uh, and we don't have a command bus implementation because we did it a little different for this project. So instead we have the messenger bus interface. And then we need a constructor. And we have the call parent construct. So in order to make a symphony command a service, uh, you need to call parent construct. Otherwise, things don't work right. Um, so we have Rebuild all, iTunes, Twitter. Um, maybe we don't want to call this all, but we'll leave it like that for now. All right, so we're going to do episodes equals, uh, if there's an episode ID, do this episode repository find episode ID, and we're going to make this an array. Otherwise, we'll do this episode repository, find all. And I'm going to format this the way I like it. There we go. So we're going to do episodes um, for all of them. Um, and then we'll do uh, for each uh, episode. Um, and then we're going to do something a little different with um, the type. So uh, if not type or type equals to iTunes, uh, this command bus dispatch new process iTunes. Hmm. I don't remember what I called it. <laughs> Uh, ah, create. Create iTunes. No? Oh, yeah. 
Ah, so I don't do one for iTunes, that's right. So we're gonna do create a Twitter card with episode get ID. Um, so we wanna do this for Twitter, Facebook, and HD. So I think this is what we need. I think this will do exactly what we want. So let's go ahead and see what happens here. Bin console app cards rebuild all Twitter. Hmm. Symphony manager and null string given. Oh. That's something up here I did wrong. Ah, mode. Okay. Um, I don't remember what the mode should be. Let's see if I have one in the other. ingest command. We spent a lot of time inside ingest command, but I don't think we're going to need it anymore. Uh, so I think we're pretty much done. Shortcut is just null. All right. So there we go. All right. So what did that do in our queue? probably created a lot of messages. I'm hoping. Yep, 58. So that's the number of episodes we have. Uh, what we're going to see now is that when we consume these messages, it's going to be a bunch of Twitter card messages for each episode. So anytime um, Dave or I decide that we need to switch the makeup of the Twitter uh, card, we can easily rebuild these. So. Now, if we go to the actual production site, if we go to podcast.com or .io, and if we look at the admin page, we're going to see that we do actually have um, everything created already. So we use the ingest script to bring everything in, um, and then we have created cards for everything that needed them. So all of our Twitter cards are in the wrong format right now. Um, so what we're going to do is push this code live um, and then reprocess the Twitter card images to see if they are handling a little better. Um, and where we can actually see this is card, uh, Twitter card, there we go. So if I go to um, the episode that we're going to have published tomorrow, um, Oh, don't make me log in. All right. All right, so if I paste this URL in, what we'll see here is that the image comes through. Ooh, didn't actually show the image though. There we go. So um, you see it's cutting off the top and the bottom. So this isn't necessarily what we want. Um, so that's why uh, I'm actually gonna want to rebuild this stuff in production. So let's see, is it done with these or is it still working? Finished handling message, all right, I think that's done. So. Um, see what we have. So we did some cleanup, uh, changed the logo dimensions. All right. 
So we're going to let that run. Uh, so that's actually going to have to deploy. So we'll let that go for a minute. Um, I'm realizing now that this was where we started. <laughs> so um, I think this review uh, ended up taking a lot longer than I'd expected. Uh, so let's add our fave icon and robots. Um, uh, public, no, source, fave icon. There we go. All right. And then robots.txt. Which we're totally fine with pretty much everything, if I'm right on that. I don't think I actually added that to begin with. Cool. Oh. All right, so we got that done. Uh, command to rebuild specific card type globally, so we did that. Um, let's go into the Twitter card duration. Uh, so that's going to take us into episode HTML twig. Um, and right here we have duration. Uh, so right now it's just actually outputting seconds. So we need to use our helper. Um, where do we have that? There we go. So we're actually going to use this value. Um, just so we can see where this comes from. Um, this was this bit here. Uh, here. Yeah, here we go. So this is this bit right here. So the duration shows up as the number of seconds. So this little tweak is gonna make it show up using our friendly, direct, uh, our friendly um, duration. Uh, let's just go ahead and reload that to make sure that it's actually working. Uh, let's see here. Label two. Yep. All right. Ooh, now it's but it's not it's not respecting white space, which I don't think should matter. But let's clean it up anyway. We've done some work so far with this, uh, with the white space stuff. Huh. I kind of thought that would have been enough to do it. Let's add it here as well just to see. I don't know the white space control stuff very well in Twig, unfortunately. Well, that cleaned it up. Um, I don't think I probably needed it here. I'm guessing that that means that the uh, file size. Um, Yeah, it looks like we need to do something similar here as well. So I'll, I'll just do that since we're here. So friendly file size. I did do spaceless. Uh, let's try doing this. Yeah, okay, that cleaned it up. Um, but rather than, well, yeah, I'll just leave it like that for now because that's good. Back. So we'll do for Twitter. 
Jupiter card. Okay. All right, so the next bit is actually trying to do this um, command that we just wrote on a specific function. Uh, let's see, where was that at? Yeah, rebuild all Twitter, and let's do episode equals. Um, I actually have to log in to the back end for this, so let's do episode 11. All right, and now let's see what happens if we consume. Cool. All right, so that part of it works as well. So what we have now is the ability, in theory, to do this in production as well. So we know that this image here needs to be updated. So the Twitter card here, um, Open image in new tab. It's 1200 by, is that the right one? Doesn't seem right. Ah, yeah, here we go. So uh, 750 by 560. So this is the, the original version that we had. So what I want to do now is try to run this command um, on our production site. So Heroku run um, I need to know which episode number this is. 95. So I don't actually have the consumer um, running all the time yet on the production site. So I want to make sure that there aren't any weird things going on beforehand. Uh, but this should be enough to tell us to um, rebuild this image. And then we can also test it on the card validators. So now we're going to do the same thing that we did here on Heroku. So Heroku run consume messages. And there should only be maybe a handful of things, actually. All right, so we get create Twitter card. So this is the one we just did. And it's finished. So let's go ahead and reload this. Now it's using the new dimensions. So we can see before it was 750 by 560. Now it's 876 by 438. And let's see what it looks like on the Twitter card validator. Um, I think it's probably caching. Um, sometimes you can do fancy things. Yeah, that's a bummer. So I think the, the problem here is that the um, the Twitter side is actually caching stuff. Uh, caching the original URL. There we go. That's actually a little better. So it's not actually fitting all the way. So one way I could probably fix that is to adjust the margin. Um, but it at least looks a little better now than it did before. So it's looking pretty close to what we wanted. So I'm going to call this one done for now. I'm going to see how it actually looks uh, once it's in production um, and we start actively sharing uh, Twitter URLs again. But it was pretty cool to be able to see that um, across all of our older episodes, we're able to see um, we're able to see that these cards were generated in the past. So that's, I always find that kind of fun when you when you're able to build something and generate some really cool new things uh, based on older content. So this was actually one of the test images we were using um, early on. So this is what it ended up looking like in production. Cool. All right. So let's see here. Um, fix share links. So we did fix duration on Twitter card. Um, we're looking at episodes, Twitter. All right, so this was this whole section. So we have a Facebook share button, some other stuff. 
Um, I'm just going to remove these for now because I don't really want those anyway. Um, I might be doing a, a larger redesign on the actual um, way this page looks later. So we're just going to remove it for now. So um, I'll call those all good. Disconnect. All right. Little share code. Awesome. So that's going to put everything that we've done now into production. So I'm going to say the site's done. Um, really wanted to do more of this. I think that we probably have a little bit of time to look into the transcription stuff, um, but there were some kind of low-hanging fruit things that um, uh, Nicholas mentioned here. So let me pull those up. So yeah, so adding a language in the HTML tag. Uh, so let's go to base. Uh, so HTML. All right. All right. Increase the color contrast um, of the timestamps. So it's this value right here. Um, and that was actually something that showed up on the audit. Is that still open here somewhere? I don't think it is. Uh, let me pull the audit up again. Uh, all right, just run audits. I'm not going to do performance, progressive. Let's run this. All right, so accessibility, let's see what it says. It just, do not have a discernible name. Links do not have a discernible name. Um, and then you can click on it to get a better idea of what it's actually talking about. Um, here, it looks like um, these are actually the profiler. So I'm not too worried about that. Actually, that gives me the idea. I should probably do this in production. So let's try it one more time. Audits. So accessibility, um, so we do have this one. So I think this is the, probably just the homepage link. That's my guess. Um, so elements are not well structured. Attributes on page are not unique. Um, okay, so that's actually something that uh, Nicholas had mentioned as well. Um, I didn't realize that we had these in two places, so I'll have to look and figure out, Let's see what that is. I'm guessing it's just the um, these items in the header. Um, simple icons. Yeah. Those are in the top and in the bottom. I'm not actually doing anything with those to generate an ID. Think. Why is it? Yeah. Hmm. I don't know if there's anything I can do about that. This is something I'm going to have to ask him about um, because this is actually um, a problem because these are embedded. Um, uh, they're embedded SVGs, and the SVGs themselves have something wrong. Um, okay. So back to the audit. Let's see what else we have that we can jump to. Page-specific valid language. Um, HTML does not have a lang attribute, so that's the one we just added. Uh, screen reader assumes the page is in the default language. All right, additional items to manually check. Interactive controls. Hmm. 
Headings don't skip levels. This is something that I don't know if I'm actually doing that right on here. Uh, not applicable, best practices, press origin or in safe. All right, I'm not gonna look at the rest of those. So um, the, I thought there was something on here about color contrast. So I know that's one of the things that was mentioned. So well structured. I wonder if I disabled too many things here. How do I redo this? Perform an audit. There we go. Let me turn those back on again. Because I know one of the times that I ran this, I got the warning specifically about those not being. Um, um, opportunities. Text is invisible while both fonts are loading. <laughs> uh, let's see here, past audits. Hmm. All right. Well, I know that this value uh, probably needs to change because, uh, oh, there's no transcript on this one. That's it. Of course, there are not going to be accessibility problems with something that isn't on the screen. So this is the thing that it's going to be complaining about. Um, let's go ahead and do an audit. I'm going to turn these off. All right, so accessibility is lower now. So I think I probably need to um, change this one. So I think that is this one here. This doesn't have a name either, though. I'm confused why some of them. Oh, I think it's probably because there's no text here. Um, so, so a. Hmm. Give me help. Uh, ensure all links can receive focus. Are you label? Sure that all link names are accessible. This also link name. Hmm. Real link. Aria label. Um, Jonathan Jeffries is asking if SVGs can have alt text links uh, like normal images is possible. Um, let me see if I can do that uh, because I think I can pass here. Uh, that's a good idea. Thanks for that suggestion, Jonathan. Um, I don't remember what the package was. Um, there we go. So let's see what my options are, because I think class, hmm. yeah, classes, add CSS classes, um, let's 
try this. DR. So. Hmm. You know, this actually might be better to have a hidden. Is this? These are the same links. Hmm. Aria label alt text. Here we go. So it did do home. So Jonathan's mentioning aria label alt text. So I should do that instead. So let's do yeah, label. I don't know if this is a valid key. See if that works here. Uh, so this is our this page here. Uh, let's run the audit again on the local version. Let's see if it still has a problem with that. Are your attributes are not valid? Uh, let's see failing element. So aria role. Aria label. Um, it's Aria role image. It might have to be spelled out. No? Role image. Aria label. It's just roll. Ah, I see. Let's try it again then. Looks like I got a little better. Uh, Linux do not have a discernible name. All right, so now it's only complaining about the profiler links, so that's good. Color contrast is satisfactory. This one has an, has error. So here we get the transcripts are wrong. So if we look at this, uh, recommendation is to have a higher threshold. Uh, so what we can do here is specify um, the colors. So let's do... Um, Uh, transcript. So here's the color. No, that's not the board. That's the border color. We want the font color. Uh, here. Is that right? Yeah. So fifty-one, fifty-one, fifty-one. Doesn't look like it's the right color though. So I didn't think it was that black. Oh, is there an opacity? Ah, there we go. That's probably the problem right there. Um, so that's giving me the full font or the full color. It's not giving me the actual color. Um, 
don't even remember if, where the transcript stuff is. So transcript time. Um, I'm going to do opacity. Let's see if this is better. Oh. Not sure if that's actually going to be enough, but we can give it a try. We're getting better. Um, ID attributes on the page are not unique. Hmm, I wonder if there's something we can, I don't think there's anything we can do there. Uh, so that's, what's that? There's the accessibility things. Uh, elements are well structured. All right, so that's that problem. Cool, well, I think that actually um, I think that might actually clean it up. Let's go ahead and push that. Um, okay, cool. So the thing with this SVG thing, I don't know if there's anything I can do about that that would be meaningful or easy to do. Um, unless the, this plugin actually has a way to strip things, which I don't think it probably does. I don't think I would have put something in there like that. Uh, get SVG, has attributes, has classes. Um, think what it's actually doing. Um, I think what, oops. I think what it's actually doing here is, since it's embedding it in line, I don't think there's much we can do because that we'd have to go in and edit. We'd have to go in and edit this file by itself um, and it's not even at the top level so it looks like I have the capability to tweak things at the SVG level but not necessarily at anything below that. Uh, remove annoying XML version So what we could do if we got to that point is probably write our own extension. Uh, Cause I think, I think it might be too heavy to do something otherwise. Um, the other thing is that we could probably um, not inline these. Um, inlining them gave us some benefits. I can't remember what it was, honestly. Um, but we could probably reference them externally. That might actually be um, a better way to ultimately fix this. Um, let's see if we have our new code published yet. So let's see. Yeah, it looks like it's a little darker now. So let's go ahead, run on it. Well, accessibility is a lot better now. So we're up to 93. Um, and right now it looks like it's only complaining about these um, icons. Um, hmm. I wonder how...
I'm not going to do anything with it. I'm going to leave it for now. Um, but it does seem like something that would be worth looking into. Um, one way we could probably do things pretty quickly would just be to drop the footer. <laughs> um, but I don't think I want to do that just yet either. Let's see. see if I can do this. So. No, I'm not going to make that change. This seems like it's probably an issue with this package. The more I'm thinking about it, this these simple icons, having that ID in them is probably problematic beyond just me. Let's see what we can find on GitHub. Go. <laughs> 20 days ago. Awesome. So pull request removes ARIA labeled by SVG lint. Awesome. So that's been merged. Uh, let's see what we can do. I don't remember yarns commands. Uh, yarn. What is it? Simple icons. dot nine dot fourteen do we have a date for that or better yet so how do I know which version this is 10 days ago merged I still sometimes have a hard time remembering how git stuff works for tracking down stuff like this code. <sighs> Commits. I haven't seen that many tags in a while. All right, so this was committed here. Um, version bump 19 days ago. Let's see what version they bumped it to. 1.9.14. Cool. So we should have that now. So let's see here. Um, I think that means I should see it here. Ha, <laughs> yep. Awesome. Well, I'm glad I took that extra five seconds, well, however long it was to see, but I think this might mean it's all good. Links do not have a discernible name. Yeah, it's just those. Cool. Um, upgrade simple to cool. All right. So I think I'm going to call that one good. Uh, so we did transcript source. We or we didn't actually do transcript source. Um, so what things did we add on here? So we did um, issues. Uh, specifically, we contrast for transcript time, um, added a role label, the logo in the nav header. Um, Upgraded all icons, 
move. All right, so we did all of these things. Let's see if this has been deployed yet. still there. And we can actually go look at Roku to see where we're at. Uh, I'm sure by the time we get there it'll actually be deployed. Oh, nope. Still working. Awesome. Let's double check and see. View source. Ha, ah, it's gone. And let's see how we do with our audit. So we are 93% before. Let's see where we're at now. <laughs> Degraded. Awesome. Wow. Huh. This is one of those things where as you fix things, it uncovers other things. <laughs> oh, it's actually... Uh, so we need to do the same thing uh, that we were doing elsewhere because... Um, let's see where we did that roll... Yeah, let's do here. We do the same thing on these other SVGs. So they're having the same problem that the home page had before, now that it's less broken. Um, and then I'll be done. <laughs> All right, so we have iTunes. Uh, we'll do Apple Podcasts. Um, let's see here. Spotify. And Stitcher. Ah, uh, this was actually RSS. So this one is iTunes. I'll do Apple Podcasts. Now we need to do the same thing down here. So my problem was that I assumed it was all good, and it wasn't. So 
that I'd skip the step of running the audit here, and I shouldn't have. So let's do the audit again locally. All right, links do not have a discernible name. Okay, cool. All right, so I actually need to go. So I think we'll call this one done. Um, probably sometime before tomorrow, I'm going to have figured out what the next session is going to be about. Um, I'll try to update Twitter. Uh, but otherwise, thank you for joining. Hope you enjoyed uh, watching the process of getting the that podcast site rewritten. Um, and thanks again. Talk to you tomorrow.